Hi, I'm Albert, and this is Helicrafters Rehabs, where Helicrafters radios get a rehab, and so do I. So I've been restoring this Helicrafters SX-71. Uh, these were made from 1949 to about 1955 or 56. And as I'm going through it, I'm uh, going through each item in the schematic diagram and comparing and changing things out and so forth and where did I put that schematic diagram oh it's over here and then I pull that out and R10 is where it's uh, over from this point to that point and well wait a minute over here it's over here and things got kind of confused and so a little more research and I find out there's four different runs of these radios of the Halicrafters SX-71. So uh, about the time I finished up, just to make sure I needed to do this research very carefully. And so I've gone through and found schematics for every one of the runs except maybe run one might actually be a run 1.1. So I'm going to uh, show you what I've learned and then if you have more comments I'm uh, welcome to have uh, to take them so what I've done is I have put together on this uh, little teeny whiteboard the relevant differences or where I can sketch out the relative differences between runs one two three and four of the SX-71. In particular, what is varying from one run to another is the plate voltage and the screen voltage and in one particular tube's case also the cathode uh, float voltage. Now the way that I, what I've done is sketched out what I think to be the original and we don't, I don't really have a copy of the original uh, Sam's, uh, uh, the original Halicrafters uh, schematic. If there's one out there, we would love to see it. It wouldn't be identified with run one of like, just, just like iPhone one is not identified as iPhone one, it's identified as iPhone. And so there's there's be no run indications on the schematic if it's from Halicrafters. And that would be very interesting to see. In particular, not only would be how they laid out uh, the, the uh, screen and cathode voltages for the 6B, E6, and 6SK7 here. That's V3 and V4. And uh, as well as what the original schematic was. So I have it here sketched and what we see is there is a RF amp of the 6BA6 and that leads into this mixer which is a 6AU6 that's V2 and its uh, plate voltage comes directly off of B plus through a 330 ohm resistor. They must have had a run on or a sale on 330, 3300 ohm resistors because they're throughout this set in the design. Uh, then the signal comes from here through some things into the grid of the 6BE6 converter and its uh, voltage, uh, I mean uh, it, its voltage is for the plate is also coming off of B plus through a 330 ohm resistor. And the screen comes off the 0D3 VR150, a 150 volt uh, regulated voltage su uh, supply, uh, which is through a 10K resistor. And this is to give the, uh, the set a, a real good drift characteristic or very low drift characteristic. And then that signal goes through some more processing and then you get to the 6SK7 which is the first IF 
and there we have a 330 ohm resistor to the B plus and then the screen comes also off of the B plus through that 3300 ohm resistor and a 33K resistor and then uh, that's more signal processing and then you get to the second IF and there the screen comes off of the VR150 again and through a 6800 ohm resistor and the plate comes again off through the IF transformer uh, through a 330 ohm B plus resistor. Now this may, let's see if I can blow this up. What I did was I summarized the voltages here. Let me see if I can blow that up a little bit. There we go. All right. So in run one, what we see is the plate voltages run around 260 for the 6BE6, the first IF, the 6SK7 V4, and the uh, six S second IF, the, the 6SK7. And the screen voltage is 150 on the 6BE6, around that, 250 on the first IF, and 150 on the second IF. Now, the, the cathode voltages in the SAMS photofactor for zero sensitivity, so the, the voltages are high. If you had the uh, sensitivity at maximum, these would be in the range of maybe 18 volts here and three or four volts in, here and here. But we don't know because we don't, they didn't do the measurement that way. So looking at this, it's kind of like they've got this design running pedal to the metal, you know, nitro injection, and we're, we need to have, make sure that the parachute is attached well to our rail because this, ra this radio is running really hot. And that, that's sort of a supposition, but lo and behold, there's a service bulletin. Now, I don't know, maybe Helicrafters had lots of service bulletins. <laughs> maybe, maybe they only had one service bulletin. I don't know. I didn't do that kind of research. But uh, there's, some, there's apparently customers are complaining and there's problems with their set. Like, for example, they were kind of burning up their 6BA6 RF tubes, but those were, that was a, they called that a tube problem. And then the IF. Uh, uh, gas, it says gassy RF and I or IF amplifier tubes and uh, intermittent 220 uh, microfarad condensers connected across transformer windings and leakage basically from the primary to the, to the you, know, you can't even see this, from the primary to the secondary IF uh, on, on these IF uh, transformers. Uh, so their answer was to basically increase the power of the AVC, which lowers the signal level, which lowers the, the uh, current through the tubes, which reduces you know, the stress on the system. But it prob that's a, was probably a quick fix. Doing some more research. I looked into six. I just happened to look at the six BE six. The plate voltage, uh, typical operation, converter service, and maximum, hundred volts on the plate, typical, two hundred and fifty maximum. So we're running that six BE six, you know, flat out, not even you know putting brakes on the turn. So we're just going around that track. No, uh, without uh, just turning the steering wheel. <laughs> and the screen voltage, the maximum, both in, uh, in general operation and in the maximum, is 100 volts. That's 100 volts, not 150. Now, I'm not, you know, the most 
knowledgeable electrical guy, but I am an engineer from the nuclear industry and you know you can be assured that there's no nuclear engineers out there that think that they know better than the manufacturer's specification on equipment whether it's a pump or a instrumentation or it's an electrical system the job of the engineer is to look at the the uh, specifications for the equipment and follow them and 150 on the screen is too much. So I I don't know what there are uh, run ones out there, and they're running, and we don't know whether they were modified according to the service build uh, bulletin or not, or whether they were modified further because what I have here is a run to uh, service bulletin and uh, schematic and I have a deep regret and apology to all who see this and that I did not find a run to schematic anywhere on the internet they may be out there they may be under those uh, services that make you pay for it, but they don't identify it as a run to. But this is a run to. And it may be the only one. And I'm going to transmit it to the Halicrafters uh, 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 interest group on the internet because I think uh, this should be preserved. And I marked on this because I didn't know any better. So. My deepest apologies for that, but, here, but it's still readable. It was done with a highlighter pen, thankfully. And I do apologize for that. Anyway, Run 2 has a significant change. What they did was, let me see if I get this right. Right. Instead of this this is off the 6BE6 or the 6SK7 give me a second here yeah it's coming off the 6BE6 right of course just want to make sure That was just too much. So what they did was they brought it through here. I'll just do a little arrow here. And I'll bring it, pick it up there so you get very clear. And they bring it right here. So the effective uh, uh, plate bias is now uh, around 7,000 ohms, not 3,500 uh, 3, ohms, which is what it was on the 6SK7. And the results of that is profound. Let me get to pull up these measurements that I took here. On run two, hope you can see this okay. I'll be not we'll redo this and put it with a darker lettering or something okay so in run two now you see there's 7,000 ohms on that plate bias the plate voltage is still around two has dropped a little bit to 250 uh, now the B plus at the rectifier is around 290 it goes through a pi uh, type of rectification or filtering system and on the other that uh, the pi includes a uh, choke a power choke and that reduces give, adds about 300 ohms resistance front all the way back to the rectifier so and then on the on the B plus rail you have about 270 volts generally 
and so it's dropped now to 250. Uh, the screen voltage on that uh, 6BE6 still coming off the, the uh, 0D3 VR150 uh, is uh, now dropped below 100. It's around 800, 80 volts. And uh, within the specifications of the manufacturer of the, of the uh, tube. So considerably uh, lower lower energy going through that uh, 6BE6 and the following uh, IF amplifier. In addition to that, that lowered uh, the plates voltages downstream. You have two four, uh, uh, 240 volts on the B plot on the plate to the first 6SK7, 210 volts on the plate to the uh, to the second is 6SK7, and uh, then your screen voltage has dropped from 250 to 210 on the first uh, uh, IF amplifier, and from 150 to 110 on the second IF amplifier. Now, that probably desensitized the set. Let me get the whole picture back in here. To some extent. Because what they have, the way they configure the uh, second IF is the screen comes off the OD3 uh, uh, 150 volt regulated power supply. And the cathode goes through a 1000 ohm resistor and then depending on what band you select it will go through another 680 ohms or a nothing or a 2700 ohm resistor or the 680 again for the last two uh, bands 4 or 5. And then that goes through uh, the sensitivity control that can be anywhere from 0 to 10k you know 10k means you know sensitivity turned off but it goes from 0 to 10k to gram so you potentially can have in the uh around you know 1800 ohms on that second uh if uh uh, 3200 ohms on the on the first IF tube as your cathode flow. What they did was to address that is they changed this resistor to a 270 ohm resistor. That's in run two, and it's also. Uh, yeah, uh, well, we'll talk about the other two runs after that. So, that improved the sensitivity somewhat. So, that was run two. Now, in, in addition to that, these IF transformers were redesigned. because The way we can tell that is that the part numbers in the original, or at least was 50H, and then a number like 416 or 415, and then that changed to 50C, 50 Charlie, and a number like 415 or 416. So they were um, they were looking at that bleed over of voltage between primary and secondary, as well as possibly higher current handling. Uh, they may have used a higher uh, or a thicker gauge wire, or whatever it would, might be, to take to make these uh, IF transformers more reliable. So Run2 has a 270 ohm resistor here, and that uh, improved the sensitivity somewhat. Now, Run3 comes out. Get here is, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail in run three, but here is uh, the cover page of run three. And basically, the only difference that I could find relevant to, to this particular issue 
was they moved the resistance back to a thousand ohm. And so the it's like the way I look at this is if your sensitivity control is down here, I'll just mark that up. We'll call it you know, it's a pot, okay. So what you're basically doing is you're deciding where the zero or where the 10 is on the, on the knob is on the sensitivity control. The more resistance, the more down this pot your initial starting point is. The less resistance, the more closer to zero, or i.e. ground. Actually, I got this backwards. The closer to ground you are. So, my book, closer to ground the better. We'll get to that later. So that was re uh, run number three, and probably around run number three, we don't know. Somewhere around there, somewhere we read there. Uh, from the hands at Halicrafters to hands everywhere. How to uh, sort of, uh, what do you call it, uh, soup up your SX-71. And this is also in the internet literature. Uh, and he mentions that which back in the day when I had one of these 50 years ago, I had an AMCO uh, Nuvistor preamp and it was necessary. And the reason why it was necessary is because the SX-71 doesn't have an antenna compensation uh, variable capacitor in it. So uh, you're basically left with the preset antenna adjustments uh, in the, in when you align the set. And that's not as good as being able to actually tune the antenna to whatever particular frequency you're at. And the AMCO did that. Uh, and it is a necessary thing for any SX-71. Particularly these days where you have antennas that are coming in on a 50 ohm coax bleed. They're not going to be matched at all to the input to the uh, uh, to the antenna. So that was one thing, uh, but uh, he, he pointed out the gain was so modest for the tube lineup, didn't take me long to spot it. The second IF had its tube cathode biased very high and unusually low screen voltage on the screen bin. So he did a uh, screen grid. So he didn't really explain what he did, but he's right. The 680 ohm and and the voltage. We'll just look at run. We can look at run four. The voltages are low. Well, 110, 115 on the screen, which lowers the the you know the attractiveness of the anode or, or uh, to electrons, which is the plate. And the voltages are lower on the plate, and the gain is lower and so on and so on and so i started the first thing i did when i uh, rebuilt it well mine is actually a run four and you'll and that's very common uh, on the internet and there is a wonderfully redrawn schematic of run for four which is accurate and the interesting thing about the redrawn schematic on run four is 270 ohms is the cathode resistor right there at the second IF back to what run 2 did. So I did that. That's the first thing I did. And you know, uh, it, it helped. I'll say 4 asterisk. I put in the 270 ohm resistor and I said, yep, yeah, it's better, but it's not what I remember. I remembered better than that. So I started working with this. And by the time I was done, 
Let me see where I got that. I have that down to, I believe I'll look at, if it's different, I'll make a comment. 2200 ohms. Point was, I'm trying to get this voltage as close to theoretically possible to 150 volts. Why not? The, the peak for this uh, for this uh, this tube, the 6SK7, is 300. I mean, it can run up to that. So 150. Actually, you could run it uh, higher um, on the first 6SK7. It's 200 volts. But what they're trying to do is use this regulated, and I understand that, this regulated uh, DC 150 volt supply to cut down on drift and uh, keep the, the uh, radio rock solid. So uh, 150, unless we, you know, just drop that all together as part of the design, I kept that in there and I got the voltages up to 149 on that and 151 just by chain, uh, modifying this resistor as close to uh, it's actually a 2000 ohm resistor, a precision 2000 ohm resistor. And I, uh, to get as close as possible, it's uh, precision resistor is a combination of resistors that give you what you want, basically. So it's a 2000 ohm resistor, and that gives you 149 volts on this tube. In addition, it's got a two, 270 ohm resistor here, and I'm not happy with this. I changed this up to a 430 ohm precision resistor and this one is just a thousand ohm and I'm going to lower it even more than that at least that's where I'm at right now so uh, again uh, the next thing I have to do really on this is I'm going to do a visual alignment to make sure everything is totally top notch in the IF transformers and then I may be lowering this and then I'm going to be measuring the gain because this is one of the few sets that actually has gain listed from one stage to the next and I'll be looking at that and comparing and until I'm satisfied I may be I may find a problem with the way I've designed things I mean or restored things uh, in going through that uh, but at any rate I can still work on uh, Re reducing this, uh, changing the the zero, so to speak, on the sensitivity control uh, to get as much gain as I possibly can without, you know, overdriving or creating, you know, uh, uh, oscillations and things like that that shouldn't be there. So that's the story of the four runs. Basically, there was a problem with run one and run two. They uh, resolved it by uh, basically reducing the voltage on the 6BE6 uh, screen as well as on the plates and the voltages and screens uh, voltages dropped as well on the 6SK7. And then the, the various runs beyond that were uh, uh, to minor adjustments. Uh, particularly in this cathode resistor. That's the story. And this is Halicrafters Rehab. I hope this was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching.